The Large Model Showman's engine and this one is part 17. An unexpected problem found when removing a front wheel. Not the front wheel that's on screen, it's the other one that's the problem. I've completed the painting of the wheels on the left hand side of the engine and as you can see it's looking okay. I haven't included many painting sequences in this series because the painting took forever. Painting around the lining was very difficult. Now I need to remove the front wheel on the right hand side. And this is when I found a bit of a problem. This small pin was very difficult to remove. Just look at the state of it, it's received quite a lot of ultraviolence. So I made another pin, not a major problem. I think it's time to show what this pin actually does. It holds this collar in place. And this collar in turn stops the wheel from coming off the axle. And the pin does not need to be a tight fit in this collar because it goes through the axle as well. It can't fall out, it's surrounded by the brass cap. Time to look a little bit more closely. The collar has also received some ultraviolence. Look at the marks on it. Here's the principle. The slot in the collar is supposed to be at the top and the pin just presses through the hole with your finger. You don't need to use a hammer. I'm only tapping it to see if it's in the right place. When I tap the pin though, it's really solid. Originally this was mounted upside down and I had to tap it out of the hole which took some doing. Now I'm using a piece of steel to tap this pin upwards. Having removed the left hand side wheel, there was no problem at all, but not so on this side. Even the collar appears to be quite a tight fit on the axle. I could not get the pin into position, so using a 9 32nds of an inch twist drill, I attempted to realign everything. And that's when the problem not only became apparent, it was obvious what the problem was. Something had gone seriously wrong during the fitting or manufacture of this stub axle. This puzzled me because the rest of the engine is really well made, I mean exceptionally well made. But this part is just a joke, and it's not even funny. The more I worked on this, the less I liked it. It needs to be repaired and repaired properly. This shot says it all, it's not even straight on the axle shaft anyway. Yet the one on the other side was perfect, I wonder what the problem is. The hole in the collar was drilled not through the centre. This is very easy to do, drilling across collars like this is quite difficult. So what's the best way to repair it? Do I make an entirely new stub axle and screw cut the thread on the end like this one? Well, no, because I don't have any change wheels and I don't think I have a die of this size. How to proceed? I could get a welder to fill this hole with weld and then re-drill it. But no, that to me is a bit of a bodge. I have a better idea. The first thing to do is to measure the length of the stub axle and it's three and three eighths of an inch. Initially I fitted the stub axle into the lathe and commenced turning away the mess on the end of it. In the end though I thought there's a quicker way. So I took it over to the bandsaw and chopped it off first. After it was cut on the bandsaw I placed it back in the chuck and turned off the mess on the end. I shortened the stub axle by a further quarter of an inch. You'll see why in due course when I show what the fix is going to be. The other reason why I didn't want to go down the welding route was just in case this was a special kind of steel that may have hardened and become brittle with the high heat from a welder. As it turns out though by the feel of this it's mild steel which is nice because it's very easy to machine. The next part of the job is to deeply center the end of the work. In case you wonder why things are wobbling about, don't worry about it, it's just the camera tripod is touching the lathe. I intend to tap a hole down the center of this part, not for a very long distance. And this twist drill is tapping size for 7 16 by 26 threads per inch. In this clip, I'm threading the hole using a tap in the tailstock. And the tailstock's not liking this much, I'm doing it by hand, but then again the tailstock is quite worn on this machine. Cutting larger threads in the lathe is fairly easy, but you have to be very careful because you can snap the tap off. But I didn't do that and it ended up like this. I used plenty of oil on this job. You can see it running down the front of the part. I will of course take this out of the chuck and thoroughly degrease it before I continue. This shows the job after I brushed away the swarf in the lathe. The diameter of this stub axle that I'm repairing is three quarters of an inch. So in the chuck at the moment is a piece of three quarters of an inch diameter bar. And as always, the first thing to do is face across the end of it. 
The side of the cutting tool that's doing the facing is now getting quite blunt and as you can see it's leaving some rings on the work, possibly because I'm going a bit too fast. But really it's time for the tip change. Once I'd faced across the front it was time for the longitudinal turning. I'm using Auto Travers for this and it makes the job a lot easier because you don't have to have your hands on the handle all the time. This three quarters of an inch piece of bar needs to be reduced to seven sixteenths of an inch for just over half an inch in length. This part has been edited, it didn't suddenly appear like this. I just shortened the clip to save some time. The other day we had a power cut, in fact we had several, and the power was off for quite a while, about four hours. The bad thing was the power went off during the editing process and I lost all my work. I couldn't go in the workshop, I was quite bored really, so I decided to sew some buttons on my trousers. When I watch back on video, the sort of things I do in the workshop, it seems quite straightforward, but sewing a button on a pair of trousers almost defeats me. Similarly, cutting a piece of cloth with a pair of scissors usually ends in disaster, just like fitting a duvet in a duvet cover, which is a puzzle because I can do a lot of things completely freehand on the lathe or on the milling machine and they turn out okay. Like this part, which is a bit longer than it needs to be and is currently going in a pot of cellulose thinners along with the other end to be thoroughly degreased. And here, when I screw part A into part B, this is what it looks like. The stub axle needs to be a maximum of three and three eighths of an inch long. I'm marking the position with a felt tip pen. I've purposely left this part a bit longer and I've done this so I can grip it with a pair of Stilsons, which will allow me to firmly tighten the smaller part into the end of the stub axle. In this clip I'm holding the small part by the end. All I need to do now is apply some Loctite 603 to both of the threads. And as soon as I applied the Loctite, I put the stub axle in the lathe, quickly screwed in the end like this. Now it's a race against time before the Loctite 603 grabs, so very quickly I applied my pipe wrench to the end of the part and screwed it firmly into position. Then I left it in the chuck for a while while I made a cup of tea. Then I came back and turned the end of the stub axle to a length of three and three eighths of an inch, and this removed the part that was damaged by the pipe wrench. I repositioned the stub axle in the chuck and cleaned up the entire shaft using a piece of 400 grit wet or dry sandpaper. Here's the story so far. All I need to do now is make a new collar to fit on the end, and then cross drill the collar and also cross drill the shaft. This repair will be successful for the simple reason the part I'm working on is a very low stress part of the job. I would not have carried out this type of repair if the damage had been any further down the stub axle. Is the original collar serviceable? No, it certainly isn't. The hole through it is not down the centre and it's now scrap. I'll be making a new collar in the next episode. Before I finish with this episode, I'm going to put a spot on here. Both of the stub axles on the left and right hand side just screw into the axle beam. And to stop the thread from unwinding, there's a small allen bolt that goes through the axle beam into a drilled part of the thread. I thought I would duplicate this on my repair to the stub axle. So I've drilled a hole almost halfway through the stub axle, and here I'm threading the hole 4BA. This will take a 4BA grub screw, which will go through the outer part into the inner part and is never going to come loose. In any case, with all that Loctite 603, I don't think the part would ever come loose anyway. After threading the hole, I'm going to fit a grub screw. I'm going to fit this grub screw using some Loctite 603. So not only will the end of the stub axle never work loose, neither will the grub screw. Although I could remove both parts of the repair by heating the stub axle with a blowtorch to destroy the bond of the Loctite, but I won't be doing that any time soon. Returning to the puzzle of why I'm not good at sewing, not good at putting duvets in duvet covers, or cutting pieces of cloth accurately, after all these years I think I have the answer. All of the mechanical parts I work on, even though they do move in the end, while I'm working on them, they don't move about. Whereas cloth and needle and cotton and things like that move around all the time, and I can't get to grips with this. And it's this very fact that they won't keep still which makes it difficult for me to work with such soft things. 
and thinking further on this, it also explains why I had problems with some of my previous girlfriends. They wouldn't keep still either. Maybe I've been doing it wrong all these years, and really, necrophilia was the answer. But that's enough of that. This is just about the end of the episode, and here, on the right-hand side, I've found the ideal piece of metal to make a new collar out of. This is the first part of the fix. I'll continue in the next video. Please stay safe and well. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back, making it unnecessary to comment that the videos are too short.